talking to the journalist today. All right, welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Yes, it is, as you've seen, that Lalu joins us this morning. Uh, good morning, Lalu. Thank you for coming on good here morning. today. So, uh, some decisions coming through from the government in terms of trying to see how they can cut the cost of governance. Mm. Look, um, does this really count as plan to cut cost of governance? Well, I, I think uh, one of the things that everybody uh, has uh, seemed to agree on is that you know we need to cut you know yeah. the cost of governance, mm -hmm. and I think that theme has been uh, has been hard. Is, is this significant? For, for, well, so the, it's a good start, but it's it's uh, it's just uh, the very beginning of it. First of all, the announcement for the travel court, you know, is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's an announcement. It will have to require a diligent uh, pursuit for it to have any impact at all. Because I can tell you that if care is not taken, the announcement can end there easily. Is that what happened to the last one, the last <laughs> government? Well, this kind of stuff happens normally, except you make diligent plans to go down the, uh, the, the, the layers of government. So, okay? specifically, so, what should they do? So, 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 this has to be an issue... Just, I think it was uh, Ken that mentioned it. There has to be a budget implication for it to say that, look, this is the amount of money that will be made available. That is how you can measure, indeed, whether you're making any cost. If you don't tie it to a financial implication, then you cannot, indeed, have any cost. People can play games around these things easily. That's the first thing. <clears throat> but I think it's also important, you know, since you're talking about uh, cutting costs, yeah. to say that, look, so, so, yeah, the president has started well to say that, look, I'm cutting 60% of travel cost. It must have financial implication. But the bigger deal actually is in the cost, sorry, in the prices that government gives or, or, or places on goods and services. That is where the main thing is. How do you mean? So, government wants to build a road. I think it was Chief B.C. Akonde that explained this in a very graphic way. Government is building a road. Uh, this is the distance of the road. The, 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 federal government, the, the state government is building the same kind of road. One is 90 million, the other is 84 million. There is a big, um, there, there, there is a big crisis in the procurement uh, aspect of governance, both, uh, especially at the federal government level. So, so we have to look at those costing. You know, it is the, the, the difference between the real market rate and the rates that government put on these prices is quite, you know, it's too wide. So and wait. for times like this, this, those things have to be uh, re, uh, re reviewed downwards. Oh, so government usually, they balloon their own costs. Well, you know, there are all kinds of arguments that people have, have, have given that say, oh, well, maybe before government pays, inflation is up, all kinds of mumbo jumbo. The time has come. For government, if we are really serious, we need to look at how do we price goods and services that governments pay for. It's a big deal, and the presidents must pay attention to that. Who is responsible to ensure that those costs are not inflated when they see them? It's supposed to be the Bureau of Public uh, uh, Procurement. You know, mm. I think that's one of what you know uh, they're supposed to do. But it, it can't be only them because. Uh, to, to, to make it effective, this thing must start from the entire public service. You know, the, the, the president must make it, make it clear if this is what he wants to do, that look, this is where we need to cut the cost, especially because even the federal government has a fiscal crisis as we are speaking. There's not enough money. Why was there a challenge last government when they announced this kind of cuts for travel? Uh, eventually, most times, I mean, my colleagues came back and said, look, at the end of the day, it just didn't pull through. It's what I said in the first point, that it is very easy to announce. So, so the chief executive can say, this is what I want done. Mm -hmm. If you don't have plans to take it from where you said it, take it down to the, uh, to the ministries, to the departments and the agencies, and if you don't make plans to, to ensure that it is enforced and punish infractions, you know, swiftly. If all those things are not done, people are just going to go back to how they do business or find other ways to beat the system. Mm. I'm just wondering, <coughs> who do you think should be saddled when such an announcement is made? Who immediately has responsibility 
you know, to act on what the president has said. It's everybody that, is, uh, that, that, that has any kind of responsibility, every minister, every uh, uh, chief executive of, of, of an agency, every director general, permanent secretaries, directors, everybody. It, it's not a, it, it, look, this is a big deal. If, if one will cut cost, it's a big deal. It, it's not something that will get done by just one simple announcement from the villa. You know, it's a good start. You know, I'm not missing that point. But it is much deeper than that. I mean, I would even expect that uh, 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 the, the president ought to take a deeper look, probably get a few uh, relevant people together and say, look, how can we do this on a broad scale? Because that is what the problem requires. Because mm, I, I, I imagine, I used to imagine, I don't know whether this is just in my own imagination, that perhaps maybe the director of protocol or whoever it was I was in charge of traveling, especially with the president's arrangement and the vice president, would be the one to ensure that, oh, there must not be more than this amount of people following the president anywhere. There must not be this amount of people following the vice president. I, I imagine that that's how it should work. Is that how it works? No, yeah, yeah, of course, there, there, there is a template that says that, you know, uh, so, so you have what they call the main party and you have the, uh, the advanced party. So, so when the president or the vice president or even governors, at times even ministers travel, you know, so some people have to go ahead, you know, before the president or the, whoever is the principal gets there. So, so there is an advanced party. Okay, so there are people that will be in that advanced party. And then there is the main uh, uh, party, which is the party that involves and includes the, the principal uh, is herself. So, so if the president is traveling, there are people who will travel with the president, you know, on his jet. That's the main party. So one of the things that we don't even know that, that we have not been told is that, so how, you know, so this travel course, you just said that, oh, so 20 people are going with the president. Does that include the advanced, advanced party? party? Mm -hmm. Does that even oh, include not, the security aid? You know, so, 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 so these things, you know, and I insist that, look, I, I must give it to the president. He has started well, but we must help the president say, look, these matters require deeper contemplation. You mean the ministers and the go, the, should help. Even deeper, I mean, we, we have to communicate it in a, in a more comprehensive way. Wait a minute. What about the states? Don't they have travel contingent too? It is this it is the same thing in the states. So shouldn't they announce or follow suit with this? Well, you know, example so, so, the so, so, so the president has set a good examples, and we expect that the governors will follow suit. But even the work of the president is not done. This is just the very beginning of it. You know, there has to be diligent uh, steps to make sure that it happens. Don't forget that the, the, the devils is always in the details. There are still more details that we need to unhack and show Nigerians so that they can hold us. I mean, hold government responsible. On his policies. One of such is that they should then tell us. Because if people are reading that it cost uh, last time it was about 39.1 billion for travel expenses, Esther quotes, this government, they should then tell us. How much are we expected to save from this? That's the point. That's so the point. We that, see that, these that, things. Yeah, it helps. That, 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 and that's why, that's why I said that there is a, uh, uh, a financial implication. There has to be a budget implication. So now the, the, the president's spokesperson say that, oh, 60% cut. Fantastic. We must make sure that when we get to the end of the year or somewhere in the middle of the year, you can come back and say, this is how much money we have saved from uh, the travel cost. And that is when the president begins to benefit from the trust that people will then have uh, for him going forward. And it's, it's, it's a very important uh, 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 thing for, for, for the president. You, the right. People have to trust you. And this is a good start, but there is still a lot more to be done.